the last talk on imports was really great. Uh, mine's probably going to be the opposite of a great import and how not to do imports uh, and a lot of lessons I've learned along the way. Um, so Hampton Roads, uh, a million was just my get people in the room title, not quite a million or so uh, buildings later. Um, my name's Jonah Atkins. I'm on the uh, OpenStreetMap US board. Uh, I s mostly do GIS and cartography. I started GIS in 1999 uh, at a, a long time ago. <laughs> um, and uh, thanks everybody for coming to the conference too. Uh, if you wanna follow along, um, anything in yellow on here is a hyperlink and I've got a lot of links and uh, stuff in there. If you wanna follow along, there's the link there. So first of all, what is Hampton Roads? Um, Hampton Roads is where I've lived since 1984. Uh, and so much, it's kind of crazy there. It's very disjointed. Uh, it's nearly 2 million people, uh, but spread out across all different kinds of cities and counties and city counties. And uh, uh, it's all these, I had to make a map about it because it's just literally crazy, but uh, depending on where you are in Hampton Roads, you call it something, and you better not call it the wrong thing because people will tell you. Um, so I, I live right around where the seven is. Uh, Hampton Roads is uh, in southeastern portion of Virginia. Uh, it's the largest concentration of military on the East Coast, so uh, a lot of ports, uh, a lot of uh, there's Navy commands, Air Force commands. Army Transportation Command, so it's a lot of transient population. Uh, also a lot of history there. Uh, you got Jamestown and Yorktown, all that stuff there. Every city settlement was probably burned down once or twice uh, through its history. Um, so there's a lot going on there. We also have a lot of tunnels and bridges. Uh, we got, you know, where uh, I live there in Newport News. Um, right at the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay, the James River and the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, so there's a lot going on there. Um, so that is what Hampton Roads is. Um, I got into OpenStreetMap in 2012 and the map was really blank and um, kind of got tired of uh, uh, adding buildings and addresses by hand. As, and so is when I started my kind of import uh, journey um, to talk about the state of stuff in Hampton Roads in 2014, uh, I gave this being starting my career in uh, uh, local government, so I worked for some cities there. Uh, I gave this talk at a local city government user group and uh, kind of tisked at all the counties that were charging for data in 2014. So this, this is what data access looked like in our region in 2014. Uh, if uh, some uh, counties don't uh, have data still to this day available, some do. Um, it's very uh, Esri-centric GIS shops, so their open data tools and portals have really allowed for a lot of counties to just kind of make their data accessible, which has been great. Um, it also kind of gave me a leg up on importing because I was familiar with all the counties being local and I, you know, being working in city government had those contacts so I could, you know, call somebody up or, or ask them questions about their data. Um, and a good anecdote about Virginia and data access, and this is still, this was back in 2014, but still to this day, uh, this town of Abingdon, Virginia, which isn't in where I live, but in Virginia, uh, charges $22 an acre for their data. So they charge by the acre. And if you want to get the entire city, it would cost you $120,000. So that roughly $14 per citizen of what it would cost you to get the data. And that's still, that, that their data still costs that much right now, so. Um, and that's still kind of the mind frame of a lot of local governments uh, in Virginia and probably where you live too, I'm sure. Um, so uh, the first 
import I did was Williamsburg. Williamsburg is a college town. Uh, is where uh, William and Mary is. Uh, a lot of historic buildings. Um, the college was pretty well mapped out in 2014, um, but not the rest of the city. Uh, I think it was 5,000 buildings or so was available as a shapefile on their uh, government website, just as regular download. Uh, it was it was open and everything. Um, and you know, I got in imports and I took a look at the import mailing list and I ran away because it was just like a nightmare reading all of that stuff and there was no way anyone should subject their self to that kind of like punishment. So um, I just imported it. Uh, I didn't put it on the wiki or anything. Uh, and uh, I worked with the one GIS person the city employed part-time uh, and mapped all their data over um, and just did it and moved on to the next city. Uh, in, uh, that was October of 2014. This is uh, beginning of 2015. Uh, this is the city of Chesapeake. Uh, Chesapeake goes, if you look at that map from the James River all the way down to North Carolina border, it's, it's got some pockets of urban uh, density, but mostly rural, a lot of farmland still. Um, they, had, they were the first city in my region to have an open data portal, uh, and they put their buildings and addresses uh, on there. Uh, and I really, I just kind of did it again because it was so easy to do it the first time. Why not do it again? Um, and I realized like this is a bad trend to set and especially like a board member saying I'm doing illegal imports. This is like 2014, so there's gotta be some kind of statute of limitations on this, but <laughs> the data still in there, it's, you know, it's good. Um, and then we did Newport News. I worked at Newport News for a couple years. I actually built like their whole storm sewer system in GIS. Um, we got their data, kind of same thing. And it just, you know, just kept, kept on. Why do I need to mess with the mailing lists? Why do I need to do all that? Like I'm doing it, it's working. Nobody's saying anything. They look great on the map, whatever. Uh, and then somebody commented on a change set 93% of the way through my import and said, you know, what the hell are you doing? If this hasn't been discussed, you need to stop, you know, whatever, we're gonna revert all your shit. So I was like, all right, so that, that's bad, obviously. And uh, I finished the import uh, and then was like, okay, the next import I'll do legit. So it was James City County. Um, it was, you know, open data from the city. Uh, and I'll talk about this uh, list I did later, but here's like a kind of a table of all my imports so far. Um, so James City County, I put on the wiki, but I didn't put on the mailing list because I, I mean, people were getting hammered on these mailing lists at that time. Um, and it was just, it's like, it's, it's a loose requirement, so maybe it's okay. Uh, so James City County is actually uh, on the wiki. It was the first one I put on the wiki and it's you know pretty bare bones. Most of the ones I put on the wiki are pretty bare bones. Uh, but if you go to like the place where I host the source data, you know I, I host the source data and the imports and I talk about the import and do stats and all that and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so James City County was a good import. Um, they're, I mean, they're all good imports. Um, and then York County, uh, which is mostly uh, colonial or uh, national park and Navy bases. So that's, you see these big uh, blank spots. And, then, and again, this is all data that's been licensed to use an open street map. So it's, it's good. Buildings and addresses um, imported. Uh, the York County GIS director, when I emailed him just to like for reassurance, just, you know, I'm doing this or whatever, which I, I did. Every time I did import, I would talk to the GIS staff. I would offer to train them to help me do the import. You know, nobody ever took me up on it, of course, but, you know, just let them know what I was doing and why and why, you know, OpenStreetMap was a good place to put this stuff. 
Uh, he was, you know, kind of like, oh, well, we could charge you if we wanted to, but we won't, you know, like he was doing me a favor. Uh, but so I still got that, you know, that was the first time anybody ever, uh, GI's department, like, gave me a little pushback on it. Um, probably the lesson there is never be afraid to, like, badger people for their data, uh, especially for, you know, counties. GIS people being a county GIS person, that's their job. That's what they're getting paid to do is be the, you know, managers of this data and its uses. Uh, so never be, you know, email people every three days, every two days, you know, it, it's okay. Uh, Suffolk was the next one I decided to do. Uh, they had their data available on their website, just in shapefile download with an open license. Um, or no, they didn't have their data. I asked for their data and their GIS manager said, you know, I really wish I could. This is our official policy that you have to pay for this uh, and all this and that, you know, and they even said, you know, I'll pass it up the chain of command, but I can't guarantee they're willing to the fees or whatever. You could try writing a letter or whatever. Uh, they first passed it up their chain to the engineering department manager, city engineer, and he said no. And then I wrote an email to the city manager and then he didn't reply to me, but then this guy, GIS manager, he's like, I have received notification that we can waiver the fees for this request or whatever. So um, persistence counts and don't be afraid to do that. Um, so that was Suffolk. And then Pocosin. Uh, Pocosin was a great one because Pocosin, uh, they don't own their own data. Uh, they hire a contractor to run their city GIS. And so when I contacted the, they don't have GIS staff as city employees, they were like, well, we don't have anything to do with our own data or infrastructure, which just blows my mind. Uh, still like that. Uh, so I had to call the contractor to get permission to get their data. Uh, they actually, uh, until I think the summer when I was doing this import, uh, had all their data in AutoCAD format, not even in like an Esri format. Um, so that was a good one, uh, good, good use case for like, you're a city, you should own your own data. I mean, that's, that's crazy that a contractor has to do all that stuff for you. Uh, Hampton was the next one. Hampton is the site of the first continuously English speaking community in the world, in the U S or something. Uh, I actually built Hampton's GIS from 2000 one to 2006, so I was very familiar with that data um, and uh, actually made the shapefiles available uh, as one of my last things before I left the city, so I knew that data was good to get. Um, so that was the Hampton, um, Virginia Beach, uh, probably the biggest one I've done. I think it was like 140,000 buildings. Um, and, and keep in mind, like, well, I'll, and I'm going to, there's a reason why I'm going to go back to this, but, like, all of these have been put on the, all of these since the first, like, three illegal ones have been put, have been put on the mailing list. I've asked for, you know, permission or whatever we have to do. Uh, rarely get any comments or feedback. Uh, rarely have had anybody uh, help uh, with these. Um, Virginia Beach, uh, 140,000 buildings. Um, that was open data on the city website. Uh, so that one was good. Norfolk, uh, that is probably where like the only city in Hampton Roads is. Um, that was uh, worked with the city GIS department to release their data in an open format which it's on there now. They didn't have it before I started talking to them and then they helped me uh, make sense of all their GIS data because their data was a mess internally, um, but was able to get all that data converted over and to import into OSM. Uh, Dare County, uh, that where the uh, Dorian made landfall this morning. Uh, Dare County was interesting I talked to the, emailed the city, this is actually North Carolina too, so, um, but I uh, vacation in Dare County, that's where the Outer Banks are, so Nag said Kitty Hawk, where the first uh, manned flight uh, took off from. 
talked to their GIS department and they had never heard of OpenStreetMap. And I was like, well, this is, you know, what it is. I talked to them on the phone, gave them a run through of it. And then uh, uh, they uh, started using OpenStreetMap as part of their city services after that, which was kind of neat because uh, they didn't have a way to display their own data. They didn't have like a GIS website. So like, I was like, here's all your buildings and address in here and here's the map and roads and all this and that. Uh, so that was good. Uh, Portsmouth was, is, uh, the, we're, we're up to this year now. So we started in October, 2014. Uh, now we're in this year. If we look at our, our table here, uh, you can see my, you can see like, you know, oh my gosh, all these imports and then burnout hit like around here. And then I got on the board around in, he, in between these two. So, um, Portsmouth, I emailed the GIS uh, manager. He was like, oh yeah, we're, we're trying to get our stuff on Open Data Portal to be up there soon. So I waited a month or so and then emailed him again and then emailed him every two weeks for the next year without a response. And then uh, kind of, you know, this was during all my burnout and everything. Uh, and then got... Uh, a community member who lives in Portsmouth was like, hey, I seen your, you know, you've done, I've seen your name on the local map here. I just started in OSM and I'd really like to get the Portsmouth buildings on there. And I was like, oh yeah, that'd be great to have some help, you know? And he was like, I'm actually, I live in Portsmouth. I can like email the city as like a citizen. And they, so he did that and they never responded. And then he emailed the city manager and they never responded. Um, uh, so a cool thing we have in uh, Virginia, yes, they ignored repeated attempts. Cool thing we have in Virginia is the state actually takes data from all the localities uh, and has uh, a uh, statewide E911 center line uh, so they take all the data, they conflate it, and put it into a statewide center line, and they do this with center lines, buildings, and address points. Um, so they actually have that open on a portal. Um, and so you can download it, or you can get it in Esri services or whatever. Uh, so Portsmouth, uh, and this one we just completed, uh, this was the first one we did where we actually used that statewide database to uh, import buildings and addresses from, uh, which worked really good. And it was actually, I mean, it's the city's data that they sent the state because they're the state requires every city to send them their data for this purpose. So it's, you know, and it's got its own license separate from that that's compatible with OSM. So now we're like, Gosh, I, I don't even need to bug with all these local you know, counties anymore. I can just go to this data set. The good thing about the county data is it's got that, you know, it's got that good stuff like if the building's got a name or a date it was built or you know, all that other stuff where this this data doesn't. It's just the building footprint and then it's the address point, you know, which we have to merge in there. Uh, and that, uh, we have one for Gloucester planned. Uh, and this one I've actually uh, handed off to uh, the other user from Portsmouth who wants to learn how to do this. So I said, sure, here's, you know, take it, do it, or whatever. So they are prepping that import now, um, which we should do sometime. And that will take care of the entire, like, Hampton Roads region. Um, if we go back and look at our list, like our totals, this is... 670 some thousand buildings we've imported since 2014 and uh, over a half a million addresses. Um, and uh, let's see, so that one's happening soon. Here's my cool reference table, which I've been uh, going back and forth and showing you that kind of got that. And you can, I've gone back and found all the mailing list uh, requests I did and the wiki pages and then the links to all the GitHubs. Uh, some of them have good notes, some of them don't. You know, I'm just one guy, so what What do you, you know, you can't ask that much. Uh, but um, some of them have like the actual steps that I did with the data uh, as far as mapping stuff over and the counts and all that, and um, which could be helpful. 
Um, I guess the message with that is just do it. You know, it's it's just OpenStreetMap. It's going to be okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I did make some cool maps, uh, and I'll plug my workshop tomorrow. I'll show you how to make a cool map like this if you come to the workshop tomorrow. Uh, so this was made with the uh, Mapbox QA tiles. Uh, so these are uh, all the, uh, the QA tiles are vector tiles of OpenStreetMap data, has all the good attributes and everything. What it doesn't have is the history uh, in it. So like you won't get the full history of a feature. You'll just get like its current state, but it's still pretty cool. Um, so I made this little map and it's got just kind of color coded so you could see all the imports and how they were done by, by city. Uh, and this is using just like various queries and filters filtered out by usernames and change set IDs and stuff. Uh, and if the Wi-Fi cooperates, you could see the vector tiles turn into actual building footprints and stuff. Uh, and you could see some neat kind of things, uh, especially if you're familiar with our region, which only, I think I'm the only person in this room, which might be, okay, maybe one other. Um, you can see my like earliest, all the places I, I edited. So you can see where buildings weren't uh, uh, imported over uh, or where we left stuff out. Uh, and then you see some big blank spots at, this is uh, uh, Craney Island here. This is a Coast Guard landfill, uh, waterfront property as the landfill. Uh, this is uh, Norfolk um, uh, Navy Base, large, is the largest Navy base on the East Coast. So you can see, but all those buildings have been added in, uh, not through imports, but just by hand. Uh, and then the great place we call the Great Dismal Swamp. So no buildings in there. So you can kind of see those holes. Um, if I can teach one lesson with the talk, it would be that, okay, here's, here's all the uh, imported buildings in white and red is where somebody has gone in and fixed a building since the import. So uh, it really helps to have a great community of people that are willing to go in and fix all the crap you do wrong. Um, so you can see, you know, like, Anywhere there's a red, that's where somebody went in. Uh, and most of the time it was somebody like, a user went in and ran a, a bot to like update the city tag or something like that. Or uh, I think one import I did all uppercase on the city name or something like that. Um, and somebody went in and fixed all that. So that would be my biggest like lesson from this of number one, don't do like illegal imports, but number two, be aware that uh, there's a good community of people that'll fix your crappy import. Um, and then here's one, this is buildings that actually have addresses. Uh, so if you look at, you know, coverage, that's pretty good. Um, I think like, you know, in your talk, you talked about like uh, multiple addresses on a building and stuff that that's just so hard to do quickly. So most of the time I just avoid it. Um, so these are, you know, singular structures with addresses, not sheds or anything, but houses. Uh, I like this one because this is where building doesn't equal yes. So that means that it says house or residential or commercial or something like that. So it's, it's not just building equals yes, which is awesome because that helps for make cool renders like this. Uh, and then, um, this one's kind of tough to make out, but this is where we actually have amenities attached to the building tag. Uh, so most, you know, we're, we're the suburbs. This is a lot of residential because so we won't have like, won't be a lot of amenity tags, but you can see like in the commercial areas, you can see clusters of, you know, buildings that have uh, some kind of amenity. Uh, what this doesn't show is like, you know, because uh, offices and schools those have their own kind of thing separate from amenities. So, but this would be like any kind of like shop or business or something like that. Um, so that's my talk. Are there any questions? Yes. I've 
so all of these I did, I broke into either uh, blocks, like by census tract or some other geographically uh, cut up area and uh, did them in Jossum like one at a time, right? So like some of those big ones were like, there was like 200 of them or whatever. Uh, so just bringing them into Jossum and looking at what those overlaps were using Jossum's uh, uh, renders to like, you know, see what where, where the buildings were and stuff. And then lucky for me, there was like no buildings at all when I started. So it was, yeah. Uh, but like Portsmouth, like the one user that actually helped, he'd mapped a lot of the city out already. So we had done, uh, we had, we were real careful of, you know, uh, transferring the attributes over and stuff. That's an intensive process and there's not really a way to get around it. Yeah. You do that by hand? Yeah. 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 So anytime there were, and I would say like for all the other imports besides that one, that might have happened like 5% of the time where I actually ran into a place where there was already a building mapped and stuff. Um, but in every case, the building, uh, the original building ID was kept and either transferred to the new geometry or vice versa, or the attributes were transferred over to that one by hand. But that's, that's a process you're never, I mean, you can't get around that if you wanna do it right and all that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, so, um, I, uh, because I worked with like most of those people, like I knew it was GIS data from the city, which was all like planimetric data from some kind of like either, uh, aerial photography company. That's where most of them get up from. So it's, you know, digitized buildings or something like that. Um, and then the, the state one you is actually just a composite of all that anyway. So the only one we ever ran, uh, that Portsmouth one, we ran into some places where it looked like uh, there was like curves on some buildings because of like a bad sensor or something like that. But, uh, but yeah, they're all very, I mean, you could, yeah, you could verify them all against the imagery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, you're going to run into that wherever. I mean, I will say, like, I run, uh, I simplify the geometries a little bit, too, because, that you know, that data you get from the city has, like, 9,000 too many vertices than you need for OpenStreetMap. So, you know, the buildings aren't going to have every nook and cranny, every eave and all that kind of stuff. So... It's good enough for OpenStreetMap, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Uh, do you have to have to like address, you know, like whichever one you said you had address data, do you have to make over to the OSM address? Uh, I, I transferred the address points to the structure. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I used, uh, I've used QGIS for every single one of them. The guy that's prepping the Gloucester one is writing some tool to do it, so, yeah. Do you have any process for keeping them up to date? As the <laughs> Come on, really? <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, uh, there's, uh, uh, well, I'm pretty vigilant of my region of knowing where new construction is and I, I usually go in, but like residential areas, I don't know that I would go in and add like 300 houses for a new subdivision, um, but we haven't really had a ton of new ones like that either. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, if, if you wanna volunteer to do that, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, that'd be awesome if somebody wanted to do that. I'm not volunteering. I okay. <laughs> Just to be clear, 
Uh, so you said some of them you brought in from the county data that had other attributes. Did you bring those attributes in as well? Yeah, so like in the amenity uh, one, or if you look at all the GitHub ones, you could see I've listed out like uh, uh, tagged the schools, because that's what most of them had, like if it was a school, if it was commercial, if it was residential. Uh, sometimes I would take the zoning data and overlay it and do like a spatial join with the buildings just to get like the type of structure, right? Like this is an industrial area, so let's just tag all these as an industrial. Uh, and then sometimes the parcel data has that information. So it's not just like taking the buildings from the city, it's like getting as much data as I can and then merging all that crap on top of the buildings to get like the best I can do, you know, which isn't easy. <laughs>